Anybody can hear me. This is my first experience with TikTok Live Studio, the application. So bear with me. This is an experimental stream. It's the first one I've done on my laptop. I'm not really a tech guy. Thank you very much uh, for letting me know you can hear me. And hopefully you can see my screen with etymology online. And then you can see me in the little box in the lower starboard side corner of the vessel. Um, you know what? I might have to pull this up on my mobile anyways, just so I can monitor what the hell's going on. All right, it's working. Good, good. All right, so just as a topic for this particular live stream, because in order to use TikTok Live uh, Creator Studio app, I have to create two 25-minute streams in seven days, and then I can continue to use this for free. So hopefully I'll be able to master it during those two sessions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show everybody out there how to parse a word. Because parse is one of the three aspects, one of the three uh, categories contained in the name Correct Sentence Structure Communication Parse Syntax Grammar, the wonderful mathematical interface on grammar technology brought to the public in 1988 by the late Colin David Eiffelwin Colin Miller. Peace up, big guy. Thank you very much for bringing it to the public, David. So we have three parts. Correct Sentence Structure Communication which comes in the form of for the facts, of the facts, are with the facts, of the facts, with the facts, by the facts, par se, which is what I'm going to be showing you today, a little bit of. And then the last part is the syntax, which is how words work together to create facts, position facts correctly with zero modification, or to show modification in what we would call a fiction, a fictitious conveyance of grammar. So right off the bat, uh, what we would do is, here we go. So what you would do is you would take a word. I like to use this example to show how messed up plain English actually is. Okay, take a word like meal. How many syllables do you think the word meal has in it? And what I mean by syllables is like, just like I learned in kindergarten or first grade, you think about how many syllables a word has, you clap your hands. Like, for example, uh, let's say, what's a good word I could think of here? Light, light, meal, carburetor. 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 That's four syllables. So in parse, you would take those syllables. Each one would be considered a particle. And you parse it. You look it up in an etymology dictionary. You go to the earliest nativity root meaning of that particle. So that's what we're going to do here is we're going to credential the syllables. So how many syllables are in meal? I'm trying to look into the, the chat here to see if anybody can give me a number. How many syllables are in the word meal? Does anybody want to guess? No guesses? Come on, are you serious? Ain't no way. That is correct. One syllable. So let's see if we are correct. Meal. Yes, one syllable. So let's change a letter in the word meal. Let's let's put a D there. Deal. How many syllables in the word deal? 
Anybody want to guess there? One. Let's see. D-E-A-L. One syllable. Correct. Very nice. All right. How about seal? How about seal? How many syllables in the word seal? Ah, correct again. We're batting a shutout or pitching a shutout here. All right, let's see. Uh, how about? Mm, ooh, here's a good one. Zeal. How many syllables in the word zeal? Z e a l. One. Are you freaking kidding me right now? Okay, how about this one? Let's change one letter. Again, that's all I've been doing is changing one letter. R-E-A-L. How many syllables in real? Anybody want to guess? See if we can get a 10 out of 10 or whatever, 100%. One syllable. <clears throat> Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Real has two syllables. Now you may ask, how is that even possible? Because all we did was move one letter. Meal, deal, seal, zeal, and real. And now real has two syllables. Doesn't sound like it has two syllables. Meal, zeal, seal, real. It doesn't sound like real. That's how messed up the English language is. But there's a little uh, trick going on here. You can call it a trick. Let's look this up in an etymology dictionary. Let's look up the word R-E-A-L, and then we're going to look up the particle R-E, and then we're going to look up the particle A-L. So first... We're going to look up R-E-A-L in the etymology online. It says it's an adjective. Now, this is in a fiction sense. Keep in mind, this is a fiction source, folks. All right? We can use this to create a continuance of the evidence for our correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar, finite means, and closure, and meanings. But it's not the be-all, end-all of it. The be-all, end-all of our correct sentence structure finite means, our dictionaries, are us, literally. We are the authority, author, authority. Get it? In order to be one of the main things, in order to claim authority, is to be the author. Anyways, so real. Early 14th century, actually existing, having physical existence, not imaginary. Okay, so that is the modern sense of what real means. Relating to things. Actual, belonging to the thing itself. Property goes back to Proto-Indo-European wealth, goods. That's all well and fine if you want to use the modern uh, articulation of what real means. But in correct sentence structure, you would not use the word real. And I'll show you why. Because they're hiding in here, there is a particle of negation. Remember, over here, it says there's two syllables, R-E and A-L. The R-E is a particle of negation. It means no. It's a no contract. I'm going to show you how R-E-A-L literally means no contract. So first, what we would do is look up the RE. Word forming element meaning back, back from, back to the original place. Again, anew, once more. Undoing, right there. That is a sense of negation. To undo something. Not to mention the back, back to the original place, again, anew. If you're doing something again or anew, it means you're not doing it right now. You're doing it again. 
it negates the now space. It negates the continuum that's happening right now. That is why RE is a particle of negation. So RE means no. And then if you look up the second particle, the AL, of like related to pertaining to, when you see something like that, it just basically we can sum that up as meaning contract. If something is of like related to or pertaining to something, that means contract. So literally, R-E-A-L means no contract. R-E means no. A-L means contract. So what if you want to use, if, what if you want to articulate something that actually exists, has physical existence in your correct sentence structure, but you can't use R-E-A-L because you don't want to use the particle of negation in your facts. Because in correct sentence structure, you would not use particles of negation in your facts simply because if you take the analogy of the multiplication problem, if you put one zero in a multiplication problem, it zeroes the whole thing out. And that's what the RE does in this word. And that's what it will do you, to your whole ass correct sentence structure if you use it. So the one way to solve this problem would be to go to a thesaurus and type in the word real. And look for some positive performance words that you could use. So absolute, that's out of the question because it's a vowel in front of a consonant. And a vowel in front of a consonant means no. Keep that in mind. Authentic would be one you could consider. Certain would be okay. Honest. <clears throat> I don't know if I would use that one for as a synonym for real. Legitimate, I would not use that word ever in a correct sentence structure because anything that has L-E-G in it as in related as it pertains to the legal system, I don't use that. But you can if you want to. I choose not to. Palpable is all right. Physical is all right if you mean something literally, something physical. Positive, maybe. But the whole thing with all this stuff, friends and neighbors, is that in your correct sentence structure dictionary, if you decide to learn this grammar and you decide to create your own dictionary, authentic would have a different finite mean than certain, and certain would have a different finite mean from honest, and so on and so forth down the line. All of those would have different meanings, but they would never change. It would be one word, one meaning, across the board, across all your contracts, in correct sentence structure, one and one is one. Is that why they use and and or in an agreement? Well, in a correct sentence structure contract, I mean, you could use that if you want to, but it, it wouldn't really be used because there are two conjunctions in correct sentence structure communication parts of syntax grammar. And, which is a command, and or, which is a choice. So either you're giving a command or you're giving a choice. That's incorrect sentence structure contract. Now in the fiction, all bets are off. And if it's a fictitious conveyance of grammar and someone's trying to screw you over, well then, you would definitely syntax uh, that and show that when you commandeer that document contract postal vessel court venue. That's how you would do that. So you can see there on my Word document, I have used uh, Rhythm Mace. I've used their example here in a sentence. You can choose and or not choose. Now to go through real quick how you would syntax that, the first step in syntaxing, and this does presuppose that you have some basic rudimentary knowledge of what quantum grammar is and what I mean by syntax. And you can find that by looking at other TikTok videos on my channel or going to my YouTube channel, www.youtube.com forward slash Jason Matthew Glass, and uh, look at my syntax playlist over there. So the first thing you do is you credential whether a word is tangible contract or non-tangible contract. So we see the word choose 
is choose tangible contract or non-tangible contract. And how would you know that? Tangible contract means it's tangible contract and it's based on a fact. It's not a fact because it has not been positioned correctly using positionals and lodials. But it's based on a fact. So do you have a tangible contract with choice? What it means to choose something? I know I do. But the way to credential it would be to look it up in the etymology dictionary that I showed you earlier and go to the earliest nativity root meaning of the word. And if the earliest nativity rooting meaning of that word is tangible contract, then you would syntax the word as tangible contract. And you can kind of see... behind me here <laughs> trying to move okay there we go you see behind me here there's a syntax key so if if a word is credentialed as tangible contract it would either be a verb an adjective or a pronoun if it's credentialed as non-tangible contract it would either be an adverb verb or a pronoun Tangible contract words will never be adverbs, and non-tangible contract words will never be adjectives. So, for sake of brevity, choose would be tangible contract. Not would be non-tangible contract. Or is non-tangible contract. And is non-tangible contract. Again, choose is tangible contract. Can is tangible contract and you is non-tangible contract. Now you can look those up and certify those for yourself. Um, for brevity's sake, I'm just going through this to give you an example of syntax. Now this forward slash. In correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, the forward slash represents the conjunction and. Okay? And and or would not be syntaxed in this scenario as conjunctions because they are not functioning as conjunctions. So choose is going to be a dangling participle verb. And look, you can see the, the syntax uh, key up here. Two is verb. You know, one is adverb, two is verb, three is adjective, four is pronoun. Not is going to be an adverb. Or is going to be a pronoun. The forward slash, which I said means and in correct sentence structure, is going to be a zero. The and is going to be a pronoun. The word and, A-N-D, is going to be a pronoun. Choose is going to be an adjective. Can is an adjective. And you is an adverb. So you have a 1, 3, 3, 4, 0, 4 scenario, and then you have a 1, 2 scenario. A couple simple rules to follow. Nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence or an advert. You have five syntax scenarios to choose from. You have your one, two, you have your three, four, you have your one, three, four, you have your four, one, three, four, sorry, four, one, three, four, and then you have your four, one, two. Those are your five syntax scenarios. Adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, Adverb, adjective, pronoun, pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun, and pronoun, adverb, verb. Also, conjunctions in the fiction as bridges or connectors 
between either adverbs, verbs, adjectives, or pronouns, or any of these five syntax scenarios. So you have your adverbs. Your adverbs uh, are pure modification, non-tangible contract, always non-tangible contract. And adverbs modify either adjectives or verbs. Okay? Adjectives are also modifiers, but they're tangible contract modifiers. So adjectives can modify either other adjectives or pronouns. Verbs. A verb is thinking, movement, motion. A verb in the fiction only exists if it's being modified by an adverb. A verb is not a modifier. And in the pronoun, a pronoun is either modified by a tangible contract adjective or it stands by itself as representing anything in language, any hieroglyph, whether it's a number, a letter, a word, whatever. If it's standing by itself, it's a pronoun. But thanks for joining me on my initial experiment with TikTok Live Studio. I think I'm finding my way around it pretty good. And to answer Jennifer K. Scott's comment there, I've been teaching correct sentence structure communication policy syntax grammar since February of 2018. All right. I've taught hundreds of people. Um, I just recently came onto TikTok in this last year trying to gain some traction on this platform. My main platform is YouTube. You can find a link in my bio to my YouTube channel, www.youtube.com forward slash Jason Matthew Glass. Or if you're serious about learning this grammar, and this is for serious inquiries only, you can apply for a correct grammar workshop because I have a whole curriculum. It's just like going into a college classroom, only you're the only student and I'm teaching you personally. But in order to apply for a workshop, you would have to contact me at my email address, also included in my bio, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. And please include your full correct name at the bottom of your email where you're asking me whatever you're going to ask me and you apply for a workshop. Because I only contract with people who take authority over their words. You know my full correct name? Colon Jason hyphen Matthew colon Glass. I just asked the same consideration of you. So this was fun. Next one should go smoother and it'll go smoother and smoother and smoother. I'll be doing another one probably in another day or two so I can get my two 25-minute live streams in so I can keep using this wonderful studio and continue to teach this grammar to the TikTok community. I appreciate everybody's viewership, and I'll catch you in the next one. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. Thank you again. And I'll see you in the next one. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs>